Hi there, my name is Vivica King. I'm a rising third year at the University of Arizona. This past summer, I worked in Dr. Ahmed and Dr. Sagul's lab under the supervision of Ian, Marcella, and Akash. This lab focuses on how to treat pulmonary hypertension through the manipulation of a gene called CHAT. This lab wants to understand the role that CHAT has in pulmonary hypertension. Therefore, I decided to spend my time this summer learning about polymerase chain reaction and how to correctly genotype mice. To start this technique, we have to purify DNA through a series of baths that extract the DNA from tail tips using various solutions. After that, we add primers, which allow the replication of DNA to occur. We also add nucleus-free water and a ready mix, which is comprised of our four base pairs, a tag polymerase, and other constituents which allow replication to occur. In order to allow all these constituents to work together, they need to reach a certain temperature. Therefore, we use this machine called a thermocycler, which allows it to reach three steps. They need a naturing step, a kneeling step, and an extension step. Using a gel, we can load in our samples post-replication. Then using an electron current, we can allow for our desired DNA to run across the gel, separating between each other based on their base pair size and overall negative charge. We can see what alleles are which by comparing them next to a DNA ladder. After we run the gel, we can see that these white bright lines appear. The bottom one is our Cree gene, which allows for DNA recombination to occur on the mice. Next white line that we see is our positive control, which allows us to know that our experiment ran correctly. Lastly, the last two lines that we see in the very top are our wild type and mutant chat genes that we are looking for. So after my experiment, I definitely had a lot of questions to ask. The first being, why we saw so many Cree genes pop up in our gel, when it definitely shouldn't be that frequent. The second question was, what protein are we looking for when we look at our positive control, since they could be any structural protein? And lastly, I was wondering if we could use this genotyping technique to verify if other DNA samples are correct after their experiment.